Let's start our meeting this morning with a prayer and a pledge. And if anyone wants to volunteer to lead the prayer, I'll allow it. If not, I will. Look like I'm elected. Let's bow and pray, please. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for the wonders of the day. We thank you for the opportunities that you have allowed us to explore. And as we meet here this morning, we ask for a portion of your wisdom so that the decisions we make on the behalf of the citizens of San Angelo may be the best decisions. We ask for, for patience, and we ask for the spirit of love. And as we have gathered here, we give you thanks and blessings and honor for all the many wonderful things that you have done for us. We thank you for the rain and for the rain that you will continue to send. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas. One state, under God, one and indivisible. The next part on our agenda is the work session. All matters listed under the work session agenda are presented for discussion and future planning purposes only. No administrative or regulatory action will be taken by the council. Public comment will not be accepted during the work session agenda. And number one is discussion and consideration of matters regarding the fiscal year 214-215 budget preparation, including, but not limited to, A, general fund revenue estimates, B, funding council priorities and goal, C, other items needed for council direction. Ms. Morgan, you are on, ma'am. Good morning. Sorry, we're, we're sharing power over here, so I'm going to get right on this mic. Y'all let me know if you can't hear me. We're here basically today to, to balance the general fund budget. We've spent some time with the with the other major funds. We've gone over them. We don't see any major issues with them. We do have some um, outlying items, and, and we're going to go over those to the best of our ability today. Um, so we're going to start with general fund revenue. We are waiting certainly for um, certified property tax valuations to come in to have a, a final idea on uh, w to what degree we could address city council priority. So we're going to get into the property tax revenue. We're also going to um, show, oh, sorry, I'm skipping ahead, to how that's going to affect council priorities and goals, and then those other items that staff wanted uh, before the council for decision. And so first, I have a brief video to break into that's going to show an overview of the budget. has got some, some major items listed there, and I'm going to break out and do that. It's real quick, maybe two-minute video. Everything the City of San Angelo has done this past year, from how many streets we've repaved to the number of times we've mowed the Texas Bank Sports Complex, has been guided by the budget. That financial blueprint, adopted each September, directly impacts which services your municipal government will provide, by whom, and to what degree. In other words, it prioritizes what we're to do and how we're to do it. This year, the City Council has established five priorities. They are water infrastructure and supply, street maintenance, employee salaries, improved development processes, and a renovated or new police station. To the extent that those priorities require funding in the coming year, the 2014-2015 budget will reflect that. The City of San Angelo's budget in the current fiscal year is $138 million. The collection and expenditure of those funds are outlined in an award-winning budget document posted on the City's website at cosatx.us slash budget. The city budget is actually a collection of many budgets. Some of those budgets are classified as special revenue funds, including Fort Concho, nursing, and neighborhood and family services. Those operations may be funded by a range of revenue sources, including taxes, earned income, and grants. Other budgets are designated enterprise funds because they provide services to citizens in exchange for charges, much as a private enterprise does. Examples of enterprise funds include water, solid waste, and the airport. By far, the largest of the funds, at approximately $61 million, is the General Fund. The General Fund generates the most attention from the public and from the City Council for two reasons. One, the General Fund encompasses many municipal services, including fire and police protection, parks and recreation, animal services, streets, and traffic controls. Two, 
The general fund is supported primarily through sales and property taxes, both of which the public pays. Property taxes account for 44% of the general fund's revenue. As does the school district in the county, the City of San Angelo contracts with the Tom Green County Central Appraisal District to determine property values within its jurisdiction. The property tax rate the City Council adopts is applied to those values minus possible exemptions. For example, an exemption of 20% is applied if a property is the owner's primary residence or homestead. That calculation yields the owner's property tax levy for the year. Because property values within the city limits are projected to rise this year, we're budgeting a 4.8% increase in property tax revenues. That number may change once certified property values are released in late July. However, whether an individual property owner's levy increases will depend upon his property's valuation and the rate established by the City Council. This year's rate is 77.6 cents per $100 of value, the lowest the rate has been in 23 years. Sales tax collections account for another 27% of general fund revenue. San Angelo's robust and growing economy has led us to conservatively project an 8.5% increase in sales tax collections in the coming fiscal year. Fully half of all general fund expenditures are for police and fire protection. Personnel costs such as salaries and benefits account for 71% of general fund expenses. Another 23% is spent on operations and maintenance. In closing, it should be noted that budgets are not etched in stone. Throughout each fiscal year, the budget is regularly amended to account for the many unforeseeable contingencies, both in revenue and expenses, that always arise. Even so, the priorities expressed in the budget serve as guideposts to progress. Thank you. Okay, so that leads us into certified valuations. We wanted to talk about um, the property tax as it um, as we got certified valuations. They were due July 25th, as we discussed. Uh, where there was additional information that we needed that we got late Monday, I believe. And so yesterday we worked to get uh, this this presentation finalized and get with with that last. Um, uh, revenue estimate would be. So at last work session, uh, we, we leaned on property tax a little bit. We knew that it would be more than the estimates we received in April, and uh, we hoped to yield an additional $1.2 million. And as we were working through that spreadsheet where we plug in uh, pro uh, proposed expenses and revenue, uh, that's what we had plugged in. And I'm going to break out to that in just a moment again to, to get an update. Uh, certified values actually came in slightly higher than that. So uh, the revenue will actually yield an additional $1,272,000 uh, compared to, to April's estimates that we talked about. So that's actually a $2.5 million increase from fiscal year 14 budget. Morgan, from the last workshop that we had, we had the $1.2 million. Really what you're saying right now is our projection is pretty close. Actually, it's $72,000 more than we had projected and what we had plugged in at the last workshop, correct? It's very close, okay. yes. So with that, that, so that's the certified valuations and we'll have that plugged in. But to speak to how that's gonna affect council priorities and goals, certainly we had this summary page um, that we've gone through before to show to, to the extent that council priorities and goals should have um, funding in the coming year, which ones needed uh, money in the operating budget. This is a summary for what that information would be, that water infrastructure and supply, of course, that's an ongoing issue and could be a multi-year item, and so that's not before you in consideration of this year's uh, original budget. Uh, street maintenance, that seven-year rotation, you'll recall, was at a cost of $2,675,000 additional dollars to the budget. Um, salaries at $2,400,000. $541,000. Improved development process and police station are items that, that we're still working that will that are not going to be before you for funding in this budget, but we'll still continue working and can, can fund in a variety of ways that we'll bring to you in the future. Morning. Yes, ma'am. On the development process, uh, weren't we hopeful that there would be some funding in that category? We are still working on exactly what solutions 
would be the council's pleasure for, wh for what level of development okay. that would be. And so once we have final direction on whether it's policy changes or investment in technology or, or, or staffing or the variety of things that could improve the development process, we don't have that information ready for you today. And so that could come to you in a budget amendment. Uh, we actually, I'm, we have an item slotted for discussion August 5th, okay. which is uh, an investment in, in, in the use of capital dollars. And I think we do have some information we're working on for that, that, that could speak to an improved development process and, and progress towards that goal. Okay, and likewise on the police station, couldn't there be some funding for, I don't know, a, s a site investigation or some professional service as we did before? Yes, and I, I think I that... I mean, I'm not looking for construction dollars or those identified right now, but probably some forward progress. Yes, and we, we are working towards okay. forward progress on that. And I think, per, per, stop me if I'm wrong, but what I... On, what I envision that would look like would be a one-time budget amendment or using using one-time funding, whether it's bond money or, or some kind of proceeds, that it wouldn't be in our annual operating budget as an ongoing expense. And so that's why I don't have it slated for discussion today. Okay. And so that's that's the only reason why. It's not because we're budgeting zero dollars for that forever. It's just for this operating budget for fiscal year 15. So that, that's how, so, so no change there on the council priorities and goals, no new information there. Uh, for the other items, you'll recall that the staff, uh, that we brought items to you for discussion as it relates to pay-as-you-go capital, that we have money set aside there uh, for capital items. Um, oh, forgive me. The wastewater pilot, I meant to put a check mark there, forgive me, that, um, that we are proposing a decrease in that of $100,000 in, in the proposed budget. Health insurance, there's still um, so a lot of variables there, some unknowns there of how that will at attach, but the 639000 is a figure we identified that could be the uh, burden on the general fund for Im increased uh, employer contribution for health insurance. And the last item there, services lacking adequate staff and or financial resources. We worked through that um, quite a bit last meeting, and I think we're in a good place on that. No infor new information to report on that. Morgan, on the, on the health insurance stuff, I, I know that this all, a lot of this stuff is still up in the air, but how did you get that number, if it is? This is we had early um, <coughs> indications from our... Um, from Holmes Murphy, our, our, our advisors on this, that we could expect a, a 12 to 14 percent increase. Okay. And so um, I know that HR and city management have been in meetings with Holmes Murphy to see exactly how that would apply in our plan, because there, there are lots of variables, certainly the changes in, in claims experience, but also the um, compliance with the Affordable Care Act that's uh, enforced January 1st, 2015. And so um, to, to show a um, a complete picture of what this could be. We took a 14% increase to what we're budgeting right now for okay. the city contribution for employees and retirees. And so there certainly will be a lot more decisions on on every uh, uh, variable still outstanding on that. So the 639,000 I think would be, it's our best estimate at this time. And I, um, I have the feeling that it is a worst case scenario that hopefully we can make decisions that will bring that figure down. Okay. However, to adopt a budget that we know we can live within, with there, since there are so many things that could change with that, I would hesitate to, to bring that number down. Okay, thank you. So this is how we left last meeting when we ended with that Excel spreadsheet and we um, we had the budget, uh, the starting point, we had general, w what the staff had brought before was general fund revenues um, in, in excess of expenditures of $1,510,000. And then council priorities and goals, you'll recall that's the, the salary increases. Um, and this is only as it relates to the general fund, um, salary increases and um, street maintenance. And you'll recall to, to get close to, to balancing the budget, we backed off of that a little bit. We had always talked about a, a seven-year rotation in recent discussions. We've been talking about a seven-year rotation of street maintenance. We backed off that a little bit to be an um, eight-year rotation of street maintenance. And so that was in an attempt to get us closer to a balanced budget Morgan, until we that, had. That was actually a proposal from a council member take it from a seven year to an eight year what would that do so that's why that reduced cost then the pay as you go capital there are funds we set aside every year for for capital items that we're not issuing debt for and so we could use that one million five hundred eight thousand to fund council priorities instead 
also a reduction in the wastewater pilot, as I mentioned before, of $100,000. Then that additional expense to the general fund for the health insurance increase, um, certified property tax values, as I mentioned before, that we had hoped that we would yield an additional $1,200,000. And then a fee assessment. We, we believe that there are some fees that uh, that are, that are out of line with what uh, should be best practices, and so that could yield additional revenue as well. Also, as a funding source, our retirement rate, the TMRS, the Texas Municipal Retirement System, our retirement rate is slightly down um, from that last year, from fiscal year 14 to fiscal year 15, so that will yield um, almost $100,000 in savings that we can also utilize to fund these items. And then we had hoped that uh, we were still waiting to get our indirect cost plan back, um, the final plan, and we were hoping that that would yield an additional $300,000 um, in additional revenue to the general fund. And so as we ended it last meeting we ended at a deficit of two hundred eighty three thousand six hundred seventy dollars so certainly we had some more work to do and that's why we met that's why we're meeting today so just as a summary before I break out into the the Excel slide with up with updated figures um, that this increases street maintenance two million two hundred forty five thousand dollars from fiscal year 14 to fiscal year 15 and that puts us on an eight-year cycle as suggested by uh, council member self. It also gives a 5% raise to non-meeting confer personnel. Um, it also includes year two of the fire pay plan implementation. Last year we had implemented year one. That was already in the budget that was th before it came to y'all. And so that just as, a, as an, a, a note, as an aside, that we are making progress on that as directed by council in the past. <coughs> and that's as directed in the retreat to, to move closer to market. And that's gonna is that gonna straighten out their the fireman pay? I don't think if it's it the end all be two, all answer, but I think that it does make substantial progress. So year two, part of the plan what y'all submitted last year will that will help. From what I understand this will bring Okay. Okay. Morgan, yes, on the street maintenance that two million two, that's not on top of the one point seven that we've been kicking That's in up. addition to the current it's budget, yes sir. So it's one point six or seven plus this yes sir wow. this is the additional marginal needed to get us on a, on a uh, this would get us on an eight-year rotation and this is really again uh, to focus in on the street maintenance as we do the study to determine the construction and the future of the streets we'll be working on this is a great uh, starting point really to make sure that we start off with a strong maintenance program this coming fiscal year and uh, this is the first time the city has had the opportunity to do something like this and it really will address a lot of the concerns that have come in from some of the citizens that some of the streets have not been maintained and this is a large leap forward mayor um back on the on the fire um th this is is what we talked about last year as far as, as equalization of the officer's pay Yes, sir. I think it was to address fire compression issues and to yeah. right. invest in the pay plan to get a pay plan we could implement for years to come. We, we did the bottom last year. We're doing the top this year. Oh, I'm sorry. You're getting outside my my. No, that's not what this is. This is. <laughs> it, Would you guys come help yeah, us? yeah. Our, our the chief, whoever. Good morning, council. I believe what we're looking at here is is we implemented a two-year plan last year and we had a hundred twenty five thousand deficit that stopped us from doing the full plan last year so that includes bringing up the people that are firefighter pay right now up to within 15 percent of the drivers pay there it's the last phase of getting everybody where they need in that compression in that compression plan so but did, didn't we also have problems at the top as far as a separation between officer levels so that if we promoted a, a new officer, he was jumping up to the, the same pay as a, yeah, an and, the, and that's what this is addressing. This, this I believe this is the last of. portion of it to finalize, from what all I understand, that, finalize all those step plans. Okay, okay, good deal, okay. thank you. And, and then, once again, um, you know, as far as street maintenance, I've, I've thrown out there a half a dozen times a way that we can address that, and I know uh, my friend to my right here is diametric, uh, completely, totally as far opposed to that as she can be. But I'm going to throw that out there one more time. If we can take our a portion of our sales tax to our voters to to work on streets, we can subsidize this about four million dollars on top of the 1.7 and the 2.2. 
I remain diametrically opposed. opposed yeah. Dwayne. Yes, sir. As far as <coughs> one, one other thing I have, when it says gives 5% raises to the non-meeting conferred people, and and we're meeting and conf we're having those meetings right now, and we're talking about or they're discussing a, a percentage that's lower than that. Uh, how do the how do the policemen feel about that? The percentage that policemen will receive under the current plan is more than that, not lower than that. Okay. I'm I'm not sure how much latitude we have. That's all the latitude okay. I've been cut off. That's all the latitude I have to discuss. Okay. That. As long as they're fine with it. It's been it's been addressed in this one. Okay. Thank you. It's well, so well back with to excuse me. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. So we really can't talk too much about it then. I mean No. Okay. Yes. Maybe you Never can mind. Tell, maybe you can tell us when we can. We're moving closer right now, of course, to finalization of the meeting confer. And um, I'll be more than happy to meet with each one of you individually to kind of give you an update on what where we are with that at this point. But um, again, we are, we have tentatively uh, come to an agreement uh, that's going to require, of course, city council approval. And um, I'll let you know individually. Right. But as it, as it pertains to this budget cycle then we're, that we're in, when, when are we all going to sort of officially know? <coughs> Before the, actually, before the budget is, is approved, we'll have those. <laughs> I, 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 I live to be able I to give you those. I that, I know. whether it's in August, September, October, or November. That's We're going to push and do it as soon as we possibly can get it And I'm concluded. sure the police are being very cooperative, so, um, yes, and staff good. as well, so that should happen yes, sooner than later. Okay. Yes, ma'am. That, so that's that next item, the funds year one of meet and confer. That's if the current year contract is approved. We have an, a, a, an estimate of if the plan that is, that is before gets approved, we have an estimate of what that would cost to the general fund, and we have included that in the budget. Correct. Good. Okay. And then, of course, no change in the property tax rate. And so with all this in mind, we left last meeting that the general fund was at a deficit of $283,000, as we mentioned. So with that, I think I'm, yes, I am, prepared to break out into um, the Excel spreadsheet to show what changes have occurred since last work session. So first, this is just a, a, a different format. But this is the information I just went over in the PowerPoint, and this is how we ended last meeting, that, um, that this is the spreadsheet as of last meeting. No changes here. <coughs> then there have been some changes since last meeting. For, uh, for example, the revenue over expenditures for general fund still at uh, 1,510,000, no changes there. The council priorities and goals still at the, um, some amount for raises and in an eight year cycle for, for streets, so a total of 4,180,000 expense there, no changes there. <clears throat> pay as you ga go capital um, taking all of that and funding pro council priorities with that uh, that could pre just in the interest of full disclosure that could create some issues in the future as we have need to fund some capital projects but certainly we're, we want to speak to these council priorities and goals first and then and then we'll bring any issues to you later um, so using that as a funding source the 1,508,000 uh, the wastewater pilot reducing that revenue to the general fund of $100,000 the health insurance increase uh, to the general fund of $639,000, which we've spoken about. The certified property tax values. Here I've, I've, I've entered the, uh, the revised amount based on the certified valuations that came in. So, so instead of being um, one, exactly $1,200,000 as we discussed last meeting, uh, we've been able to, to sharpen our pencil on that figure and it's actually $1,272,669 increase since last meeting. The fee assessment, we still have some, uh, a figure plugged in here uh, as, a, as an option to, to fund these items. So a marginal revenue of $20,000 um, on that one. The uh, TMRS, the retirement rate decrease, no change there, still $96,876. The indirect cost plan, uh, the last meeting we thought that could be as much as a $300,000 increase to the general fund budget. It's actually a $173,185 increase to the general fund revenue. So uh, we also, as, as part of our process, we re propose revenues in April. And then since we have had more uh, 
experience in the current fiscal year 14, uh, we went back and sharpened our pencil on revenue estimates to see if there are any of those that should be um, increased or decreased um, since we since April, since that's been some time. And so uh, we do recommend that we would increase the revenue that has been presented to you in the past by $342,000. Um, there were some items in there that were that if we budgeted that amount, we really were going to exceed that. And so we wanted to have a, a, a better, a more achievable budget. And so we would recommend increasing that uh, revenue to by $342,000. So la you know, last meeting, we ended at a $286,000 deficit. This meeting, um, starting off, we're at a $4,773 um, surplus. And so at this point, we would have what we would call a, a balanced budget. We are addressing these these priorities to a significant degree, perhaps not to the extent that uh, would be best practices, but certainly making substantial progress since since last fiscal year. And that's what we have um, on those. Question. Yes, sir. On the, I've got two questions. Explain to me the indirect cost plan. I know I saw the three hundred thousand dollars and. How does it drop that much? This is an increase. I mean, the, not drop, but what, what is the big difference? Um, the indirect cost plan is where we estimate what support services are provided to the funds outside the general fund. Um, so for example, if the um, stormwater fund had to hire their own HR director, their own city attorney, their own all of that. So this is to the extent that general fund items are used to support outside funds. And so that that plan, we, we attempt to update it every other year, and we just got that final plan in on Thursday. And so that can swing, uh, that can change from year to year as we update it. Okay. I'm sorry, am I answering your question? Yeah. I think you just did, yes. Uh, and my second one is, do you, do you, off the top of your head, what were, what was the certified property tax amount last fiscal year? Do you remember? The um, valuation last year was about $3,900,000,000. And this year it's $4,151,000,000. I'm sorry, I think I'm comparing April estimates. I think fiscal year 14 it was three billion seven hundred million dollars. It's about a four hundred million dollar increase um, from last year to this year of, of new property added to the role and increased valuations. And the net of increased valuations decreased but there were some decreased valuations, um, the change in the exemptions for over 65 disabled um, homestead. So the net of all of that was about $400 million more on the certified property valuation. Okay. That's what I have. So at our current tax rate, that's what yields the, the marginal revenue of $1,272,000 from April's estimates to today. Also, the um, we, we, had ta we talked about in the video and we, t we talked about with y'all last meeting that the sales tax was proposed up at about 8%. Um, since we have more months of experience in fiscal year 14, an 8% increase, if we budgeted in fiscal year 15, an 8% increase, we would actually be budgeting less than we're gonna receive this year. The, the sales tax is growing more than we had anticipated. So we actually were able to, we, we would recommend that we would budget a 12% increase, and that's, that's, that's still very conservative with what we're receiving year to date. Mayor? Yes, sir. May I? This is certainly good news. One of the threats, one of the concerns we have is that $1.5 million line in pay as you go capital. Morgan touched on it, but we're getting ready to talk about uh, in a future council meeting how to utilize some pay as you go capital money to address needs we have. One of the lines in there is uh, Council Member uh, Grindstaff talked about uh, making progress on the development uh, initiatives. Uh, there's some funding in there we're going to propose to make progress on those. There's some small capital issues that we tried to address. We did some mill and overlay uh, just north of Houston Hart uh, here a few years back, a couple years back. 
uh, we're giving that capital up. Overall, it's very good news, very good and very positive, but at some point we, in a future budget, we'd like to restore that pay-as-you-go capital so that we can address some of these small and mid-level capital needs that, that come up from year to year. Other than that, uh, this is um, very positive news. We also are required to publish a draft of the budget by um, Friday, August 1st. Um, and so we will make um, any changes as we've discussed today that we certainly we're going to have um, increased revenue from property tax, et cetera. And so we're going to have that item published online by Friday. Um, and so just so you all know that it'll be out there, we'll email it to you all when it's done. And you may be. Um, if any of your constituents are, are on our website and see that item, I just wanted y'all to know that there is that document out there. We'll email you when it's out in case you're getting any questions on it that you have a copy of it as well in front of you. It, it is just a draft though, and if you have questions, we'll be glad to help. I have a couple of questions. Yes. Uh, on the uh, $20,000 increased uh, fee assessment, um, wh where did that figure come from? because I don't think we'll discuss that. At last budget work session, uh, we plugged in an amount. It could be more than or less than that as we draft exactly which fees should come before the council for review. And so the $20,000 is not, um, Forgive me, sir. I think it's not mathematically founded. It's not it's like this rate at a five dollar increase times this many users. It's it's not that. It's simply that there could be substantial change in our fee assessments um, as we bring those items to you uh, before the first of the fiscal year. Can you tell us which fees you're looking at? I think the. Do you, do you have information on that, Michael, or do you want? No, you go ahead. The. Um, we have we've had some fees that we've redu re reviewed recently that um, that we still need action on. For example, um, punitive fees as they relate to to compliance with city code. And um, that it's a, we actually really an admin fee. Uh, uh, we don't charge an admin. There's no admin charge associated with a code cleanup. Like environmental code. Yes. Okay. Um, you know, if 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 the code crew uh, on a Thursday morning goes and cleans up your facility whether it's picking up garbage out of a yard or mowing uh, they charge what it costs there's no admin fee assigned to that see and and i'm totally opposed to that because to an admin fee as such yes because to to me we're in competition with billy bob's uh lawn service out here that does the same work to me those sort of things should be uh, more of a fine and less of a service. I mean, there's probably some service to be involved in that as far as an elderly person, a handicapped person, those sort of things that I, I would have no problem with totally waiving those. But for, for Joe Blow out here that has the same thing that happens over and over and he can get the service from the city cheaper than what we can have it, uh, he can you know get it commercially done that that's crazy well then that's I didn't make myself clear because that's, that's exactly what the code folks are telling us and exactly what we're proposing an right. increase in those fees because yeah. some people are telling us we're cheaper than making other arrangements it's easier just to let the property go the city take care of it and then pay a fee okay. but uh, I, I guess I guess my stumbling block is fee uh, I'm I'm not sure uh, you know, uh, uh, to me, it's a fine. It's not a fee. Um, you know, and I know fines are decided by the judge and, and go through the legal system and on and on. But by the same token, I, I think that we don't need to be in competition with our citizens, our businesses, and that the people need to understand that if, if they step across this line, you know, this is, is what's going to happen. I think we would prefer to look at uh, the work we do as the last resort. Mm -hmm. We do it because no one else will do it. And so we think that the, the what we charge for that should be appropriate to a last resort kind of effort, which means raise the fees so we're not competitive with the locals, that it is more 
uh, it is more beneficial for a property owner to seek out that private enterprise to take care of that problem rather than leave it to the citizens to bear. Well, and, and there are several of these that I'm going to ask for uh, to be put on the agenda at our next meeting. They, uh, they are ready to talk to you about, the code folks are ready to talk to you about this and would be glad to hear your request well, to bring and it forward. Not only that, but the dilapidated house program, uh, some of the other things that, that we have had in the past that were very beneficial that, you know, I haven't seen any, any mention of in this budget. When it, excuse me. Are we, are we yes. Thank when you. is that? When is that agenda item coming up? It's, it's not next. It's week. not proposed right now. Okay. Uh, because unless council asks for it to bring, ask for it to come soon, it will come as part of a comprehensive fee review process. And I'm totally in favor of this increase because if it's if you want to tweak it and call it a, a fine, I don't care because I deal with a lot of those property owners that don't yeah. care. And, you know, we're pretty much like babysitting their, their, their lawns, and I think that's wrong. And I think we need to raise that, that fine, if you want to call it that. You both are saying the same things yeah. that uh, yes. uh, Mr. Flores is telling us. And on another thing basis. that I just mentioned, I've, I've had a couple of phone calls on it where we're talking about fees is some of these garage sale signs that, that are illegal anyway. So I, you know, I'm going to propose that we put a $50 fine on those. You know that you've got the address on the on the sign anyway it'd be one thing if these folks put them up and then take them down after it's over but they leave them up and then our code folks have to go out there and and clean up after them and I think that's wrong and that happens constantly so if it's part of this I'm certainly interested and I would propose something like that so on the on the fee assessment let's just make it clear when because I talked to Daniel about this and basically we're gonna look at all the fees not just for for the uh, the the things that they've broken where they've broken the law or things like that, but all the fees. And there's a lot of the fees that have not been increased since the '90s. We just talked about this the other day, and I, I, it blows my mind that we don't have. We need to have a schedule where these things need to be increased periodically instead of waiting 20 years to increase fee. And then we have to hammer the person, and everybody gets mad because we bring it up to what today's standard is. So I think Daniel Daniel talked to me about this, about us having yeah. – we've got a plan moving forward, and hopefully we'll bring it to the council soon about doing every fee, every fee that we deal with where we charge the public some, some types of monies. And that's a uh, basically a comprehensive fee review on a yearly basis. Yeah. This is not something, again, you hit it on the, on the money there, Councilman. Uh, a lot of times we have a, uh, an item that will come before the city council, and you're having to vote on an increase that's sometimes 18, 20, 25 percent. Yeah. And that's not fair to the council. That's not fair to anyone uh, in the public either. So we want to make sure that those adjustments are done on a year-by-year -year basis mm -hmm. so that hit won't be that big when it, we do have to make a decision there. Similarly, will there be a review of things like the use of the convention center and all of the different? Yes. Excellent. Yes, yes ma'am. And Morgan, please tell me we, we, we're not going to be talking about ambulance fees again. <laughs> As an increase. As we do a comprehensive fee review, we'll look at every fee. Yeah. That doesn't mean we'll increase we'll or, or change every fee. If, that is if council would like, we can bring that, we can have that, uh, that, that code admin fee or fine, however you can put whatever label on it I think you want. Uh, we can bring that discussion forward in time for inclusion in this budget if you'd like. And then uh, and bring the rest of the fees on a schedule that, that the budget folks are working on. But we can accelerate that one because that group is ready to talk to you. Yeah, uh, I would. Yes. I would certainly like that. I think that mm -hmm. you know, as we've said, people have realized, and they do. They tell you this. It's just easier to let the city do it because if they're only forced to mow yeah. three times or two times by the time it goes through that entire process, that's much cheaper than having regular maintenance by local lawn companies. And that's not right to the citizens who live here and have to look at it. So I'm all in favor of that one being increased or whether it's you want to say that it's through an administrative fee or a fine, but doing so immediately because the neighborhoods are suffering. Well, in, in addition to that, they borrow equipment, I think, from operations. Uh, well, that, that's terrible, so we need to stop. That's right. They do cleanups <laughs> on Thursday morning, and uh, I think there's an open invitation, a standing invitation for city management and for <laughs> elected officials. If you want to participate some Thursday morning, uh, they do cleanups, and uh, you can 
you actually, if you just want to drive by and see what's going on, see the work they do, uh, these are these are officials. Uh, some of them are, are hired to do cleanup work. There, we've got a couple hired to do cleanup work. But the code officers get out there, and they actually do cleanup, and the code manager gets out there and does cleanup work. They don't just enforce. They do cleanup work. And so they borrow equipment uh, when it's necessary, and they'd like this could be a funding source so that they'd have their own equipment wouldn't have to borrow equipment from other people and we could probably get that done within this budget discussion for beginning uh, October 1 if you'd like bring it forward one of the things I'd also like to discuss is I know when I was working for the city we had almost two million dollars in liens uh, on our books <clears throat> and it goes along the same lines um, I'd like to take a look at those and see if we can figure out some sort of a remedy for those, whether it's a lot seizure um, where, where property's been vacated or whatever it is. But, I, I mean, it, it's crazy for us to just continually be mowing a, a, a lot and taking care of the trash on a lot that we never get paid for. And, you know, that, that property sits there where... We could let it go for five dollars and make tax money back on it. We, I think, since you retired, we created the real estate division in the in the legal department, and they've been uh, they improved that that oversight tremendously. And so, I think they'd also welcome an opportunity to uh, brag a little about about the strides they've made. Good. I'd like to know how much we still have in liens, also. We will well, go ahead and report um, at uh, a meeting where that discussion is set on the agenda with pleasure. And I'll put a plug in for code. I think Jane Flores and, and his crew do an excellent job. I mean, they go beyond the call of duty many times, and I really appreciate what they're doing. Uh, so anything to help them out, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I'm all for. So. I drove through a, uh, I won't mention the name of the city, but I drove through a West Texas city similar to the size of San Angelo yesterday. And I am so appreciative of what our code enforcement officers do because there's just no comparison. Um, our, our city is so much cleaner than the one I was driving through. So they do a tremendous job. There's still work to be done, and, and of course, they'll, they'll tell you that too. But uh, thank you for mentioning that, Councilman. They definitely do good work. If we can just get, get text out to Mo Loop 306 or Houston Hart, that would be fine with me. Yeah. <laughs> and with that, all I have... Um, Left for the, the council's consideration today is just a, an update on on upcoming deadlines that we're um, we're getting to that point where we're wrapping things up and, and needing to be compliant with with state deadlines and and upcoming issues. Uh, the August fifth meeting we will have some some budget discussion. We'll have a final um, uh, decision on on how raises should be applied. Uh, we'll also do a record vote on the tax rate. And as of today's discussion, I think we could. Uh, work with the city clerk to get background in for for perhaps this fee review of code compliance um, then August so that'll be our last meeting to to discuss any changes to the budget August 21st we will introduce the budget ordinance first public hearing uh, on the budget ordinance we'll also uh, where we need to have a public hearing on the tax levy and uh, we'll also have a record vote on any property tax revenue increase of course this is not a rate increase this is just that there's more revenue last year than this year because of increased valuation and new property on the tax roll so so august uh where our attempt is to meet all these state deadlines in uh, regularly scheduled city council meetings and not ha uh, call any special council meetings to comply with those deadlines then in september morgan before we move past august remember we've rescheduled that second august meeting i think it's not on the 19th it's on the 21st is 21st. that what that mm -hmm. it's not a just a reminder that's is that a, a 9 a.m meeting okay Thursday meeting instead of a Tuesday meeting and I hope you'll remind me later on too because I in September we uh, again no um, 
no special meetings being called just to, to, to hold them at regular council meetings to uh, to meet these state deadlines that September 2nd we will adopt the budget ordinance have a second reading and adoption of that budget ordinance uh, we'll also have the introduction of the tax levy ordinance of course that always comes afterwards that has to be after the budget is adopted then at the September 16th meeting we'll ultimately adopt the second reading of the, the tax levy ordinance and uh, we're working closely with our city attorney's office on new legislation that's coming out exact language uh, you'll recall that the, the caption is always long the motion always has to be exactly this language and so we're making sure that all of that that comes before you is exactly uh, what what needs to be to be compliant with with the new and changing laws so that's all I have for you this morning thank you Morgan you did an excellent job very thank well you. prepared and I appreciate you are there any further questions from council before I call for the last agenda item which is number two and somebody give me some help on item number two, which is adjournment. Move to adjourn. Second. All, ex all in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you all. Thank you, Morgan.